If you were stuck in New York City as rising sea levels combined with an apocalyptic snowstorm trapped you inside a library and made going outside near suicide, would you know how to survive? In today's How To Be video, we're going to be breaking down the mistakes the characters make in the movie, as well as how we can fix them to ultimately beat the death blizzard from The Day After Tomorrow. Our movie starts off with a cinematic tour of the North Pole, where we see a team of researchers collecting samples of ice. Everything seems chill until the ice around the researchers start to crack, and there appears to be an earthquake. Or should I say, an icequake. The researchers quickly scramble to try to save their equipment, but a rift forms in the ice. One of the researchers is trapped on the other side, and he decides to jump across with what I assume is around 20 to 30 pounds of ice. If you were in this movie, chances are you would fall to your death like a dumbass, since you're sitting on your ass watching YouTube all day. I strongly suggest you ditch the ice samples and get a running start and save yourself. After barely making the jump, his crew decides to grab the ice samples out of his hands rather than pulling him over the ledge, causing him to just lay there dangling over. I don't even think I need to explain the issue here. Please, go for the person before the ice. While attempting to pull their comrade over, they use a hand-to-hand -hand grip to lift them up. However, the strongest way to lift someone over a ledge is a wrist-to-wrist -wrist grip as shown here. We then cut to a global conference where a scientist is trying to convince the politicians that global warming is an issue and that a bunch of ice is breaking up from the North Pole causing a rise in sea level. But then the vice president basically says, fuck you, I don't give a fuck, the economy is more important. And we know politicians are assholes, so if I were the scientist, I would suggest hunkering down and protecting yourself rather than trying to convince these politicians to help you. The movie then cuts to all places around the world where we see a lot of strange weather phenomena, whether it's hail in China or it's snowing in India. There's a lot of stuff that's pretty fucked up. The movie then introduces us to one of our main characters, Sam Hall, who is the son of Jack Hall. And if you don't know who Jack Hall was, he was the scientist trying to convince the politicians earlier to save the environment. Sam is part of the school's decathlon team, so he's traveling to New York in order to compete. But this is just when New York starts getting completely fucked up. Sam doesn't know any of this is happening because he's at his decathlon competition surrounded by other competitors who are strangers to him. I strongly suggest making as many connections you have during this period because you never know when a connection might be important. The more connections you have, the more likely people are to listen to you. Jack, the scientist from earlier, wakes up in the middle of the night and receives a call saying that there's been a 13 degree drop, and that's fucking huge. So this is where the movie starts getting interesting and natural disasters start to happen. The first event we witness is tornadoes in downtown LA followed by a tropical storm. This is very rare for that location obviously because tornadoes usually don't fucking form in California. That's like an Oklahoma thing. So if you were faced with a tornado, how would you survive? First thing you want to do is go to lower elevations, such as basements or inside a room. Because studies show tornadoes tend to climb towards higher elevations, and that's where most damage comes from. Avoid windows, so basements are great because they usually don't have any windows. Also get under something steady, like a workbench or a table. This provides cover from falling debris. And don't stay in a mobile home, because that whole fucking home will be sucked away. It turns out, however, that the tornadoes in California are only the tip of the iceberg, and as the scientist says, the major events are gonna... Not just continue, get worse. We start to see the extent of what New York is about to face when a helicopter flies through an epically large storm. In fact, the storm is so cold that everyone in the helicopter fucking freezes to death. Luckily for the people in New York, they're not facing any sort of freezing temperatures, they're just facing some rain. There's some mild flooding on the streets, but overall everything seems okay. Until we take a look at the Statue of Liberty, it's being swamped by a massive fucking tsunami headed straight for New York City. The tsunami then makes it to the streets of New York City, where obviously I would recommend that you run away from the tsunami, but how would you best do this? We can see here that the cars are neatly pressed up against each other, meaning that you should be able to use the cars as a platform and channel your inner subway surfer to get across these cars. It's much faster than trudging through the water at a slow speed. Our main characters seek shelter in a nearby library, which is not a bad choice since libraries are generally well reinforced. Before heading into the library, we see a homeless man steal some hot dogs from a hot dog stand, which is morally not very legal, but in this situation, I would definitely suggest stealing as much food as you can and entering the library with it, as long as you're not risking your life, especially since you know that food is going to become extremely scarce. Also, don't tell anyone you have the food because you want to hide it and keep it for as long as possible. Right before entering the library, we see a really close call because there's this one woman complaining that she left her passport inside her car, so she has to go back and get it. In this case, do not sacrifice yourself and go back into the fucking tsunami to get someone else's passport. Number one, a passport is not as important as their life, and if they think their passport is more important than their life, you should let them go get it. Just a reminder that when you enter the library, the tsunami isn't magically going to stop, so make sure you head to the top floors and stay away from any windows that water can rush through. The son realizes that all the cell phones in the area are dead, meaning they have no signal, so the only way he can make a call to his scientist's dad is through the landline. But the landline is halfway underwater. 
So he goes to the freezing cold water to attempt to make a call. I just made a notice in here, if you're afraid that you're gonna drown in such low water levels, you probably shouldn't be in this movie. But if you were, you could grab some of these flotation devices to make floating while calling easier. During the call, Jack the scientist dad makes sure to tell Sam, the guy in the library, to stay in the library because there's gonna be a giant cold storm, colder than anything he's ever faced, and his balls will probably fall off if he goes outside. We see later in the movie that it's starting to snow. New York is getting colder, and there also happens to be a ship that just floated into New York City because New York City is basically underwater at this point. We can see that New York has been almost completely frozen just mere hours later. The dumbass police officer then directs everyone inside the library to go walk outside before the snow gets too deep. But where the fuck are you walking to? You're just gonna freeze to death. Even after Sam tries to stop everyone from going, saying his dad works in the government and his dad says everyone should stay put, everyone still decides they need to go walk to the nearest frozen city and then walk to another frozen city until they run out of food and definitely die. At this point, I consider a lot of people leaving the library is a good thing because now you can keep all the food inside the library to yourself and maybe survive and not die of starvation like the people who decide to walk outside. We can see that even in the southern end of the United States, people aren't doing so well. Despite it being one of the hottest regions, it's still snowing, and people are trying to illegally immigrate into a warmer country such as Mexico. But as you can see, Mexico's having none of it, and they're not allowing any illegal refugees there. This is the biggest Uno reverse card in all of movie history. Meanwhile, the dad is starting an expedition to go and attempt to rescue his son. Although I think this is a valiant effort, I wouldn't suggest it. It's basically the same thing as committing suicide. You might as well stay alive and try to have your son make it out of the situation, rather than both of you dying. Meanwhile, back at the library, everyone is wheeling books back and forth in order to keep their bonfire going. This is the one advantage being in a library has, other than being a safe location, is that there's plenty of books to burn. The only thing I disagree with here is that they're burning entire carts of books at the same time. Yes, this makes a large fire that doesn't need to be tended to for a long time, but it's also inefficient. You never know how many books you're going to have to burn, so it's best to keep cautious and burn a few books at a time. Also, I strongly suggest burning the furniture to start your fire. This doesn't need to be tended to for a long time. Plus, what are you going to use the extra furniture for? No one's going to sit there. In addition, you could always stuck pages of a book inside your clothes for insulation. At this point in the movie, we also see how hopeless it is for everyone that left the library. It serves them right, and it's actually kind of funny to watch. At the same time, we see Sam's dad and the rescue crew, and they're going to rescue Sam, who's stuck in the library still. But as their sled goes over a glass building that they're traveling on top of, it cracks, and one of the members is trapped, dangling over the edge once again. The guy dangling over the edge is in a fairly precarious situation. So the first thing you should do is do exactly what he does in the movie. He does a great job of releasing the sled. Although the sled contains all the supplies, if you're gonna die anyways, what's the point of keeping the supplies? In order to pull Frank up, which is the guy dangling over, the middle guy has to support all of Frank's weight. But I don't understand why he's to take off his fucking gloves. In the end, Frank is forced to cut the line and sacrifice himself so the other two can get out. A big issue here was the dude who was trying to support his weight, his hand started bleeding since he took his gloves off. Maybe keep your gloves on so the glass doesn't cut you. However, there's one solution that Frank never thought of. He could have attempted to pull the sled up to his body, if he's able to, and then use the sled as some sort of way to lessen the impact. This could potentially allow him to survive the fall and survive. Though if you were at the bottom of the mall, he would be trapped until the other two came and rescued him, which could be a long time. While Sam and the girl seem to be having a great time together, however they find out the girl is fucking sick. She's dying of blood poisoning. It turns out she got a cut trying to get that dead woman's passport out of the car. This is another example of why you don't help other people, especially in movies. So Sam and the boys decide to go on the ship from earlier. They decide to go on the ship to find medicine. And since the ship is frozen over, everything should be fine, right? Well, no. It turns out the wolves from the nearby zoo have escaped their enclosement. And they're hunting people. The gang eventually find what medicine they need and they're ready to head back with some food and medicine and everything seems all good. However, then the wolves show up. They bite one of their members. I know a lot of you would assume you need to get medicine for rabies, but contrary to popular belief, many wolves don't actually carry rabies, so everything should be fine. So they lock the wolves inside the boat and all seems well, they could just slowly get in the library, right? Fuck no. Just like in this movie, everything is a fuck no as an answer. There's a vent known as a super freeze, basically everything starts freezing extremely quickly, so they need to book it into the fucking library as fast as they possibly can. The dad, who's actually in New York and really close to his son, notices a super freeze is happening as well. He sees this when the flag's boner instantly disappears, so he runs away and goes hides in a building. Sam and his dad are both facing similar issues of being chased by the cold. I know it's not that realistic, I don't think cold really chases you, and also they decide to close the door to just try to stop the cold, and I don't think that's how it works. But hey, it's just a movie, everyone survives, the father ends up finding the son, and they kiss, have sex, do all that stuff. And then we find out later that the third world countries that were really warm, such as Africa, South America, are now the best countries to live in because they're not completely destroyed. We see that every developed country in the northern hemisphere is basically gone. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and you can catch my content in the future. And also make sure to follow all my other socials linked in the bio. Drop a quick comment on what movie you want next in the next episode of How to Beat.